Okay, so we are running a little late. We are going to run into the break and we'll end up uh, extending uh, into lunch just a little bit beyond the break. Um, so AM6 feels like they'll probably be out of IPs by 2016. Uh, Aaron here would like to uh, speak about RFC 5549, which is discussing using V6 next hops for V4 traffic. Um, He's a principal design engineer. He's been with AM6 for a long time. Uh, he's got a lot of history and uh, appreciate your attention. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I, uh, I won't ask uh, people to stand up that are uh, younger than uh, 40 um, because you probably won't recognize them um, this. This is what AM6 was about 18 years ago. It was a thick Ethernet cable uh, in which you literally uh, pushed in a next router and a next router. Everybody was on the same shared medium. And um, that all started out like this. The shared medium is the uh, uh, horizontal stripe on the bottom. AM6 is still the same. Um, although this Ethernet cable in this shared medium uh, doesn't exist anymore, um, it's all being replaced by huge switches, um, an MPLS network. We still provide one shared medium, one broadcast domain where everybody connects to, and every BGP router can see any other BGP router in this shared medium. Um, a little bit about M6. Um, we are not for profit. Uh, Internet Exchange. Currently, we have 521 networks connected, ASs. Um, we peak about 1,900 gigabits per second, of which 6 gigabit is IPv6 traffic. Currently, we have about 1,000 ports, uh, more than 1,000 ports operational on 11 sites. This is a big network, and we have a problem. And that problem is this. For years, for years, um, we grew about about 30 IPv4 addresses per year. And um, we figured, well, with uh, this growth rate, we can go up to something in 2022, 2023, <coughs> and then IPv4 might really be old technology and IPv6 might really, really be the, the, the way to go. Um, but around 2010, um, M6 decided to get real salespeople, and you see the effect. We grow uh, until um, to now around 84, um, uh, 94 um, IPv4 addresses per year. Um, if you predict that uh, further, you will see that um, we'll get out of IPv we run out of IPv4 addresses. Um, around 2016, perhaps if it grows about 75 addresses per year, it will be 2017. So in the foreseeable future, we'll have a problem. Um, we don't think that IPv4 is then obsolete. We still think that people would like to exchange IPv4 routes to each other over the internet exchange. Um, and uh, at that point, we cannot connect new routers, new members. So that made us thinking, what can we do? What can we do about this IPv4 depletion problem? Um, so the possible solutions are, first of all, the solution is just get the slash 21. Just make the IPv4 subnet bigger, and, um, and then, uh, then everything is solved. Um, this is a rather uncreative solution, and it doesn't bring you to talks on Nanoc. So um, it's no fun. Also, the broadcast domains are uh, become really big. ARP is already a problem. The broadcast, uh, the ARP broadcast, have to be uh, processed by every router on the network, and uh, especially the older routers, um, uh, based on uh, slower MIPS processors, have a big problem in handling all that ARP. Um, solution number two could be um, don't do one shared medium. Make little shared mediums like either all kinds of slash 30s to every peering relation um, um, or make 
a different RFS box for different interest groups, something like that. It could be a solution. Everybody has to go on tech networks, put in more IPv4 addresses, so the entire usage of IPv4 would not go down. It would actually go up a little bit. But um, we don't need one contiguous address block. And um, that, is, that might be easier to obtain, because the idea is in 2016, uh, if I go to RIPE, uh, saying like, hey, can you give me a slash 21? They will laugh at me. Um, so that would be one solution. Um, it is not really a nice solution because, for example, the route server, everybody has to be in, a, in one broadcast domain for that, um, at least to be on the same route server, um, is already uh, about 537 IPv4 sessions. So um, what you get is if you then put a second LAN with a new route server on, then you have a, a big route server where everybody wants to be on and a small route server that you hardly can get any uh, routes from. So this doesn't seem to be a good solution either. The solution that I hear here a lot is why don't you use ROC 1918 at the West space? Um, um, well, RFC 1918 at the West space was never meant to be on a public network, on a network that interconnects different organizations. We have to deal right now with 500, 600 organizations. If this is going to play in 2016, we have to deal probably with 700, 800 organizations. They all use RFC 1918. A large quantity of them uses RFC 1918 at the West space within their own AS. Um, so we have to find some unused block or something. And I foresee already the discussions where people say, no, we are really important. You cannot use that particular block. Um, you have to use this other block. And then there's another par party that says, we are really important. And we cannot absolutely not re remember that you used this block. We cannot handle that in our systems. So it doesn't seem to be a good solution either. Besides that, um, if you use RFC 1918 in your IGP, um, and you get a more specific uh, on your router, you see all your BGP sessions going over into your uh, own network, and things will go down. It doesn't seem to be. Um, attributing to a very stable internet. Then there was a, solution, a suggestion to use IPv4 link local addresses. Um, RFC uh, uh, 3927 addresses. These addresses are used for, um, and this is what the RFC said, for small ad hoc networks, it, uh, a view host. Even though you have a slash 16, um, to make the addresses self-assigned, you need a large block to avoid conflicts. It's not meant to be used on a public network like the Internet Exchange. Um, besides that, IPv4 doesn't know anything like an, an interface scope. IPv6 does. Um, the FA80 addresses, uh, they, you have to give an interface scope. And there is a draft that never went into an RFC, but uh, is implemented by Cisco and Juniper, where you can actually use FA80 addresses to do BGP. Um, I didn't know that. This is one of the things that I learned with this project. But that does exist. This solves the problem a little bit if we would uh, not have IPv6 space, address space. But we have plenty IPv6 address space. It's about not having IPv4 address space. This, this doesn't solve the problem either. So either there must be uh, some RFC that says, OK, we're going to use uh, uh, something like an interface scope into IPv4, but RFC 3927 already addresses that and says, this will be very difficult because there are so many implementations already out there that don't assume that that, that, is, in, that is the case in IPv4. You can do it on the application layer, so it might be possible to put, put it in, uh, in BGP, but it's not implemented. Um, Why would you need interface address scope? Well, I did a little test. I got a list of MAC addresses from um, four internet exchanges, M6, D6, Lynx, and uh, NLIX, through a member that is connected to all four of them. Um, some routers, the, the hybrid routers, the, the four stands, Brookades, Cisco uh, 7600s, um, they use the same MAC address on every interface. 
So by comparing which MAC address exists on different internet exchanges, we could show that actually routers are connected to multiple internet exchanges. 95 addresses were connected to two of the four internet exchanges, 14 to three of the four, and two were connected to all of these internet exchanges. And mind you, these are only routers that use the same MAC address on every interface. These are not the junipers that have a MAC address for uh, a different MAC address for every interface, and some Cisco's do that too. Um, and this solution, just like the RFC 1980 sol uh, solution, would also break trace route. So um, uh, troubleshooting would be more difficult either. So what about using an IPv6 address as a next stop for an IPv4 route? It turns out there is actually an RFC that describes that. It's RFC 5549. It just says like, okay, you have an, uh, an IPv6 route and you give an IPv6 next hop. You can do that in MP. BGP. I'll come back later a little bit on how that is implemented. This seems weird. Um, this is long, slow. Oh. Um, there are two ways to do the forwarding when you do that. Um, one is to implement RFC um, 5565, which is um, the um, software. Uh, software mesh tunnels, where you basically slam an IPv4 header in front of your IPv, uh, sorry, an IPv6 header in front of your IPv4 packet and data. And use that to transport it to the next router, and the next router will decapsulate it again and will forward it as IPv4. This is a possibility to implement the forwarding side of this solution. Another solution would be what I can now call direct forwarding. This is not described in any RFC, uh, but it's something that we implemented uh, ourselves, and that is basically um, using the Ethernet header, because that's in the end what you, what you do. In the end, the, the next hop will be resolved on an Ethernet platform like M6, um, it will be resolved into a destination MAC address and will be encapsulated in an Ethernet header. Um, and this um, creates no over, extra overhead uh, compared to the previous forwarding method. Um, I must say that this solution also breaks trace out. That is uh, inevitable. Um, how is RFC 5549 implemented? Um, when we presented uh, this before, actually uh, my colleague Stefan Plug presented this before, um, he was asked uh, things like, how did you get your, uh, this RFC through the uh, IETF? Well, it's not our RFC, it's being uh, done by two people from Cisco. Um, and basically, it uses the possibilities for um, uh, what, what MBGP, multi-protocol BGP um, provides. Um, multi-protocol BGP allows you to actually say, like, I have another West family that is IP4, um, I have an, an, an uh, AV that is IPv6. And this is the pseudocode. Yeah. If the address family is IPv4, but the length of the next hop is either 16 bytes or 32 bytes, then we have uh, an update here that has an IPv4 with an IPv6 next hop. This is the whole RFC, uh, the whole RFC 5549. It's a very simple RFC. It's so simple even that um, we at M6, or actually Stefan Plug at M6, could implement it in Quagga. So we made a proof of concept uh, implementation, which is based on direct forwarding. Um, I had a movie about it, but I could not show it really here. So um, it's, um, we, we implemented it in Quagga. We had two Quagga implementations talking RC5549 to each other, and we could actually transport uh, one route, uh, IPv4 route, to the other router and forward subsequently the packets for this route. Um, you can find on this uh, URL, uh, m6.net slash downloads slash RFC5549, you can find a presentation with a movie in it. It's actually the whole presentation is a movie that talks about this implementation. Um, to spoil you, the movie starts with this, namely there is no route and the movie ends with this when there is a route where something can be pinged. Um, 
Yeah. So I, this is the spoiler of the movie if you want to see it, but there is in between a whole story of how this has been done. And with that, um, I basically save you uh, some, uh, some break time with that and come to the end of this presentation. Are there any questions about this? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go into break now. Uh, as usual, I want to remind everyone, surveys are exactly how you tell the program committee what you think about the presentations that you've seen thus far and what we can do for you for future meetings, and you get a great prize. Uh, some people will get a great prize. Uh, two other minor housekeeping items. One is some of you may have noticed the outer tables do not have power, the inner tables do, and so you might, if you need power, you might need to buddy up with someone. And as well, someone left a, looks like a MacBook Air charger in the front table yesterday afternoon. So uh, speaking of power, you may sadly be out of it if, uh, if this was yours. So please come up and claim it. Thanks.